Imagine a day when you get up and all your friends, family, and co-workers are gone. All around you is emptiness, not even a bark from the neighbor's annoying dog. This is not a scary movie. This could be our future, exaggerated, but it's still true. We are getting lonelier and lonelier since we are losing tangible communications. We have hundreds of friends in cyberspace, but how many of them can we have a face-to-face -face conversation with? And this is not all. As studies have shown, depression and anxiety caused by social media, especially in younger ages, is increasing. But I'm not a psychologist, so what can I do as an architectural researcher to improve the balance between virtual and tangible communications. Urban sociologists have studied social life of public places in cities for years. However, the importance of neighborhood as a fundamental organ in the city life has been neglected. We have forgotten that neighborhood community is the very first and the most important location for experiencing social ties. Today, neighborhood with the sound of children playing, parents chatting, and benches waiting for fair secret kisses is just a memory and not even a clear one. We have reached a point to ask ourselves, what will remain of our neighborhood if we eliminate houses? Smiley faces or empty streets? I believe reviving interactions in today's neighborhoods requires lots of interdisciplinary studies. And of course, there are interesting methodologies. William White, one of the pioneers in this area, has identified where people tend to stay and interact in cities and where the great deserted spots are. He found out that the number one activity in public places in cities is simply watching other people. Not all of them are the girl watchers. However, following his work, observing neighboring relationships, interaction in residential areas, and the effect of neighborhood environment and residents' behavior are means of my study. These observations will lead to production of useful frameworks for studying social ties and improving design guidelines that can contribute to sense of community in neighborhoods. So, with observation methodology in a specific case studies, we will find out what is it that makes the good neighborhood works and the other not. We put the matter to the pl planning commission and hopefully they would develop new zoning resolution for neighborhood open spaces and the lost soul would be back. Thank you.